we're going to talk about acetone. I think it's the first ketone we're talking about. Ketone group is nothing more than a carbon bonded or double bonded to oxygen and it has carbon carbon groups to the right and left. So this is the simplest ketone. And acetone, as stated before, is an organic compound, colorless, volatile, flammable liquid. Actually, the production of acetone is high, 6.7 million tons per year. And the main uses are one third as industrial solvent or domestic solvent, one quarter for the production of acetone cyanohydrin. Probably you're wondering what the hell is that? It is used for the production of the monomer methyl methacrylate. If you still don't have any doubt what this is, probably you know this polymer, which is polymethyl methacrylate. It's this plastic which is very hard, clear to see. Like it's the substitute of crystals, but technically it's not a crystal, it's a plastic. Acetone is produced directly or indirectly from propylene. In this specific case, even though we're going to see the alternative route, which is the isopropanol route. Unfortunately, as stated before, in real life, 83% of the acetone is produced by the cumin process. What is the cumin process? Essentially a process which is focused on the phenol process. And we produce benzene, then propylene, you produce the cumin process, and then you further oxidize it to form phenol and a byproduct acetone. Because this is very high on demand, this is technically a byproduct. And therefore, production of acetone alone is not likely to be sustained. So it more likely you're going to have it as a byproduct. Okay, just keep that in mind. But in this specific case, we're going to see the production of acetone from the nearest neighbor, which is isopropanol. And you know that from isopropanol, we got propylene. So you know that if you have propylene, you call in theory, but this isopropanol and then acetone. The main reaction is going to be dehydrogenation of the isopropanol, meaning that we want to remove hydrogen gas. So there are certain key players, hydrogen gas, acetone, isopropanol, and so on. Pressures are mild, but temperatures are huge. In order to favor the gasification of hydrogen gas, you must increase the temperature drastically. We are going to use a catalyst carrier of copper, and this is done in vapor phase. Here it goes. First, isopropanol is heat using a stream to vaporize the same. So we got isopropanol. Let's use IP. We are going to mix it here with our recycled isopropanol, IP. So this is IP recycle. So IP recycle plus pure fresh isopropanol is going to get preheated and then condensed, sorry, compressed from four to five atmosphere. Now that we have the temperature and pressures required, we can start the inlet in the reactor. The reactor is nothing more than a typical shell and tube reactor. So you've got this shell. Outside the shell, we have this uh, heating fluid or thermal fluid. Inside the tubes, we have this reactants. Actually, inside the tubes, you will see that we have the catalyst. So there are some, let's say, incrustated catalysts of copper. Now, operating at 400 to 500 Celsius, we're going to see that there are several reactions and several products. What you're going to see is that isopropanol is not going to react completely. You're going to have some acetone and you're going to have some hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is very easy to get rid. Actually, we're going to be using this water scrubber. We're going to add water in order to ensure the solubility of both acetone and isopropanol. And you know, technically, that hydrogen gas is very low soluble in water, so this will go as off gas. Then we have here water, this W for water, isopropanol, IP, and acetone, AC. What we want to do is to separate first our main product. So we bring it here, acetone column. Pretty easy to remove a ketone from 
isopropanol and water. And you know, guys, that in the following column, we cannot divide completely all the water. I mean, we can have a high purity water, but a high purity isopropanol is not possible. So isopropanol is going to be recycled and the water is going to be used in this cycle right here. So as you can see, the water is technically in a closed loop. In real life, of course, you need to add a extra water here in order to counterbalance the loss. What else do we have here? The column produces water as the bottom product and isopropanol as the top product. Isopropanol is not completely pure. The water is cooled down using a water condenser and sent to the tower. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. And that's everything, guys. This is how we produce acetone. We remove hydrogen gas. The reaction is isopropanol dehydration. And, well, I'm pretty confident you get the idea, guys. Whatever doubt you may have, you are always welcome to write me down a comment.